hope you're enjoying your, your dinner. But at this time, we'd like to, if you're still finishing up, that's, that's perfectly fine. Take your time. We're going to start our program. And we're going to start this with a look back in time. And as Hanley celebrates its 100th year anniversary, we know that Winchester's black students were not a part of Hanley from its beginning. We've been a part of Hanley for the past 60 years, but before that, it was a little bit of a different story. Beginning in 1927 and running through the mid-1960s, black students from grades 1 through 12 from Winchester, as well as some of the neighboring counties, were educated at Douglas School on North King Street. Are y'all gonna make it? Yeah, I was about to tell y'all about that. I was about to get my Tommy Dixon on. Be like, sit here! The school was erected by the Hanley Board of Trustees from funds between to the city in the will of Judge John Hanley, which was also funded the construction of John Hanley High School. The fact that both Douglas and Hanley were created by funds from John Hanley's gift to the city ties the two schools together from their creation. In 1954, in the landmark case of Brown versus the Board of Education, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled unanimously Unanimously, that racial segregation. Karen, I know you did this last me. I thought the practice music. And the words you. That's all right. When she fumbles, I'm going to point it out. Ruled that racial segregation in children in public schools was unconstitutional. Even after that decision, desegregation, especially in the South, came very slowly. Shamefully, some schools in the Virginia system closed their public schools to all students rather than to allow integration. Those that could afford private schools were educated there, and those who could not were out of love. In Winchester, a gradual approach was adopted beginning in 1963, but at the rate it was going, it would have taken many years to achieve full desegregation. In 1965, the city hired a former naval officer, Jacob Johnson, as superintendent. He was advised to continue the gradual desegregation plan based on his principles of moral justice, compliance with his oath, to uphold the Constitution. He set out to accomplish that integration within one year, which he did do. So Douglas's last senior class was the spring of 1966. And if anyone is here from that class, please stand up and be recognized. The class of 1966, the last graduating class from Douglas High School. If you are here, please stand up and be recognized at this point. In the fall of 1966, Winchester Public Schools and Hanley High School became fully integrated, but integration was not without difficult times. A full review of Hanley's history requires a detailed examination of not only segregation and desegregation in Winchester, but our purpose tonight is not to make that examination, but it is important that we acknowledge the first half of Hanley's existence from a racial perspective was a complicated and emotionally charged time, which for some still lingers and has effects to this day. Our first speaker this evening will be one of the first black students from Winchester to attend Hanley High School. Elizabeth Libby Washington was the youngest of eight children born to John and Sadie Finley Washington. She attended Douglas School in grades one through eight. She was moved to Hamlet in 1964 before full integration and attended there for grades nine through 12, graduating in 1968. While at Hamlet, Elizabeth was inducted into the National Honor Society, one of the first black students to be so honored. Elizabeth. Give her, give her a praise. Give her a flower. Give her a flower. She's here. Give her a flower. Elizabeth is married to James Washington, and they have two sons, four grandchildren, and four great grandchildren. Her working life was spent at Capitol, Capitol Records, Rubbermaid, Frederick County Sheriff's Department, and the Northwestern Regional Adult Attention Center, from which she retired in 2010 as a sergeant. 
Please join me in welcoming Elizabeth Washington, John Hanley High School, class of 1968. Good evening. Can you hear me? Good evening. Those of you that know me know that this is truly out of my comfort zone. <laughs> However, I do know that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> also, anyone who knows Tommy Dixon knows that it's hard to say no to him. <laughs> I'm going to tell you just a couple of things that happened to me at Hanley when I started in the ninth grade in 1964. I'm only speaking for me, no one else. Everyone has their own story of their experiences at Hanley. I've heard some say that they didn't have any problems at Hanley. If you didn't have any problems, you probably came later than 1964 attended maybe the Catholic Church or played sports and knew some of the kids prior to coming to Hanley. I want to say that things got better at Hanley in time. My mother made me go in 1964. I wanted to stay until Douglas closed in 1966. She said, you're going to go now. You might as well go now and get used to it. You're right around the corner from Hanley there is no need to go all the way across town to Douglas. So that was the end of that discussion. <laughs> the day my mother took me to register at Hanley, the assistant principal looked at my grades from Hanley, which were A's and B's. He said that I would have to take the general course at Hanley. He said, you will not make those grades up here at Hanley. So I guess he thought that the kids at Douglas were getting an inferior education. We got used books from Hanley that were all marked up. But regardless of our school supplies, we had excellent teachers that cared about us. January of my ninth grade year, he called me to his office and said, I see you still have your A's and B's. He said, you can switch and take the academic course of study but that I would have to stay an extra year to get all the credits needed for the academic diploma. I told him no, that I wanted out of Hanley as soon as I could get out. <laughs> as a young person, I felt that walking into Hanley those first days was like walking into hell. At Douglas, I was surrounded by family, friends, and teachers that cared about me. It was hard to walk into a school where some people hated you just because of the color of your skin. Some of the students didn't want you there, and also some of the teachers didn't want you there. It was lonely. There were not many black students at Hanley in 1964. I could hear the N-word from the back of the class at times, and the teacher would not say anything. At the end of the day, I would walk down Jefferson Street to cross Braddock Street to go home, and the James Wood school bus would come by. Those kids would have their heads out of the windows on the bus, and they would call me the N-word. I thought to myself, I don't even go to school with you, and you're calling me names. As I said before, things did improve as time went on. There is a person that I will never forget that I will be ever, forever grateful to for her kindness. She always smiled and said hello. She knows who she is because I was able, as an adult, to thank her and tell her how much her smile meant to me. It helped me through some first rough days at Hanley. And I just want you to know that a friendly smile to another person does not cost you anything you may never know how much it means to the person receiving it. Thank you.
When the Supreme Court ruled that schools needed to be integrated for students, it failed to say that the faculties of schools needed to be integrated as well. As a result, many black children found that they attended schools where none of the teachers looked like them. It's well known that lack of identity role models has a negative impact on children. In Winchester, teachers from Douglas were folded into the city schools, including John Hanley. These teachers, as well as some of the white teachers, provided a critical support system for the new black students. But the number of black teachers was then and remains to this day insufficient. In addition to faculty support, black student success was a result of strong support from parents who knew the role education plays in advancing lives. Support also came for these students from extended families, neighbors, community organizations, and from black churches. And success came as a result of the very, oh, sorry, from the very, uh, sorry, and then success came as a result of the very strong foundation that had been laid for these students at the Douglas School by outstanding committed teachers and administrators there. Moving beyond the 1960s through the turbulent 1970s and beyond, black students at Hanley served as role models for the students who followed them. Tonight, we celebrate these individuals and cumulative successes. Our next speaker is a shining example of that success. Andrew C. Roberts, also known as Andy or Drew, was born in Winchester during the segregated Jim Crow era. One of the five siblings, as a youngster, he attended all black schools, including Fremont Day Nursery and the Douglas School. In 1966, 12 years after the Brown v. Board of Education decision, Andy became part of the first integrated class at Quarles Elementary School. He later attended Winchester Intermediate School and then John Hanley High School. At Hanley, Andy was a student leader, holding several leadership positions, including senior class vice president, honor court judge, and the first African-American member of the Key Club. He was talented in athletics, earning the JAA's Ron Rice Award, and in music, playing in church and various R&B groups. Following graduation, Andy pursued a fine arts degree at Howard University in Washington, D.C., before transitioning to James Madison University for his Bachelor of Science degree in marketing. His drive for knowledge continued, with Andy then earning a master's degree in health administration from Pfeiffer University in Charlotte. His career spanned various sectors, including top 500 companies, where he excelled as a human resources specialist and manager. He also dedicated 27 years to distinguished service in the United States Navy and federal government. Andy and his wife, Lynn, are the proud parents of their daughter, Leslie, and their late daughter, Ashley. Andy and Lynn enjoy their retirement in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we are glad they have traveled to be with us tonight. Join me in welcoming Andrew Roberts, Hanley Class of 1973. Good evening. Say it one more time. I can't hear you. All right now. Hanley Pride. Douglas Glory. Douglas Glory. I just want to talk to you a little bit today, and I realize that dinner ran a little long, so I'll be short. As um, I did that, I wanted to make some notes um, prepared for you. And uh, I know a lot of you folks love to see when a clergy person or someone like that does this and sits a timer on. <laughs> Ain't happening. <laughs> um, my great aunt, many of you might know her or recall her. Her name was uh, Viola Roberts Brown, Lamp Lampkin Brown. She lived almost to be 111 years, ago, years old, and she passed away just a short while ago. She would always say it was good to be seen and not viewed. <laughs> but she added a little bit more to it. She said it was always good to be seen and heard, but better when you sit down. <laughs> so I'll move forward with this. As a member of the class of 1973, I remember as a child in 1966, the shock and, I don't know, amazement uh, 
how fast things went without explanation. It bothered me for years to really understand what was happening and why it was happening. It wasn't until later that I found out about the Brown decision too of 1955, that it delivered, uh, integration was supposed to take place, but there was some resistance here in Winchester for years. Eventually, over time, things start to change somewhat. We begin to uh, integrate in the, to the school systems, and I remembered that I had a role, I thought, as a person and a human being and as a student to represent the best that I am, the best that we are, because I had a base, a foundation, a familial uh, grandparents, family, immediate family, to instill in me and encourage and inspire me to do better, regardless of what was going on around me, because I know that when it happened, the integration piece, we did not have friends. No one wanted to talk to us, called us names, felt like we were less than in ways, if you let it. But I want to talk to you today for a few minutes just about resilience, the resilience of character. Because of the foundation that was laid, that transition went a lot smoother. And I want to say that there were certain people along the way. All of us over time have had someone who gave us a break or made things a little bit easier for all of us. For example, when I went to, uh, I think it was uh, Charles Quarles Elementary School, located in Winchester, what is it? Garland, Garland Cross, excuse me, it's been a long time. <laughs> I, so many times, I, my, my hair was long back then, <laughs> if you notice the pictures. And I, I want to say this too, by the way, I um, want to apologize in advance that if I didn't say anything to you or see you or notice you, it's because I haven't seen you in a long time. And some of you haven't seen it all. And you haven't seen me. So a lot has transpired over time. And um, <laughs> the way things were going, we could have had grandchildren, great-grandchildren up there from the class of 73. Last year, we celebrated the, ninth, uh, the 50th class reunion of Hanley High School. So we're kind of in sync with this 100-year uh, reunion. And this is a fine thing. And I want to also point out to the fine folks here who put this together, all the hands and the supporters, uh, a big thank you of gratitude. Yeah. Give yourself a round of applause. Miss Newman, I don't recall her name. Maybe Mr. Umps, maybe Jimmy Wilkes, some of the folks over there might recall her. Miss um, Newman was on my fifth grade teacher. And if it had not been for her, I don't think that we would have survived because we were separated, broken up from the groups that we knew. And it was through that uh, sheer resilience and determination that we were able to make it through, at least in my opinion and in my experience, over time, got involved and had a mindset that we can make it, we're going to do this. My counterparts, so to speak, my classmates, became very friendly at some point because they saw our contribution. Many of the, the differences, uh, the mindsets, the myths, misnomers, whatever you want to call it, began to dissipate. I have some of my best friends to this day from Hanley and Douglas all together. And I'm proud to say that. In closing, I'd like to talk a little bit about the ones who didn't make it. I want to leave you with some inspiration and say that you can make it in anything that you do. If you put your mind to it, be determined. Follow your passions, no matter what. Because I will tell you that when I was at Hanley, I loved sports. Didn't get to play at first, but then after a while, people start to see what you could do. You know, you become a leader. And I, be, I think because of that uh, leadership that people recognize, man, these are, what I heard is not so true. I'm knocking this over now. Uh, there was a lady, is a lady, by the name of Gloria Brown Covington. Many of you that went to Douglas might remember her. 
Does that ring a bell to anyone? What's significant about Gloria Brown Covington? She was the first black graduate of Hanley High School. She's not here. And I hope in the future that we can do this again because this is like a homecoming and nobody died. <laughs> so to all those who went before us, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to Mr. Umps over there who uh, was uh, very inspirational to me. Mr. Umps, please stand up. So Mr. Umps had a nickname. <laughs> he used to uh, hang out with a guy by the name of Ryan Rice, head coach of the football team at uh, John Haley High School. And he saw something in the kids, and I think he had a lot to do with how we progressed. Mr. Umps and him would go at it in the gym. I mean, mano y mano. And uh, they got this name, I don't think anybody ever called it to his face, but it was Banty Rooster. <laughs> I never knew it, what that was, because we didn't live on a farm. But uh, anyway, <laughs> so again, I just want to encourage all of you, and thank you so much. It's good to see all y'all. Y'all look good. Hey, give yourself a round of applause. And thank you for the honor of having me here to speak. I love it. I love you. And as they say, there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Haley Pride. Can we give another round of applause for Mr. Andy Roberts? So I want to take a little bit of time to talk a little bit more about the successes and contributions and accomplishments of Hanley's black students. Uh, some, some of the committee have compiled an interesting list of Hanley black firsts. So we're going to have, once again, a little quiz session. And this is not Karen I's quiz. This is actually someone that real is a researcher. Real questions. Yeah. What? Say it again. They're real questions. Yes. Not real made questions, up. Real questions, not made up. You know, we. We asked to have our questions in, like, you know, what, what was the one question? Who was the first? You just said it to me a second ago. The first fight that my dad broke up? There it is. That's right. That's right. That got X name. So you can, I'm sorry. Once again, Thomas Dixon. Either way, remember, call out the answers is the fun part. It's not a competition. Don't go crazy. There will be some prizes. Some prizes, but they're not that great. And the prizes <laughs> will be handed out by the committee, committee members on the floor. So, here we go. Who was Hanley's first black administrator? Anyone? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. After integration. My bad, my bad. We got out here, Mr. Hunter, but it's not. No. No. I hear Davis. No. 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 Give it up. Give it up, Karen. Mr. Kurt Gaskins. Kurt Gaskins. You Kurt. all failed. That's all right. Y'all can run sprints with Mr. Dixon at the end. Okay, next is Hanley's first black teachers. There are seven names. So just call them out. Battle, I heard battle. Battle, battle from the back. Brooks, we got Brooks. Effie Davis, yes. We got Davis. Callis, we got Callis. We got battle, I heard battle. We've already got that. 
We've got we've got Battle, Brooks, Callis, and then someone yelled Davis. Got three more. We got Glenn Gore, Mrs. Glenn Gore, Mrs. Romaine Lett, and Yes. Uh, Henry Dr. Henry Moss. No, we have Mr. Brooks and Lomax. Lovelina? Lovelina Lomax? Mrs. Lovelina Lomax. All right, next question. Who was Hanley's first black cheerleader? Go ahead, bro. You got it. You got it.
Rodney participated in commercial litigation sections of law firms in Atlanta, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C., before serving for four years as the, the administrative law judge. He's currently working at Thompson Hospitality, the nation's largest minority-owned food service company. He is vice president of business development, where he's responsible for new business acquisition, as well as contract negotiation and client retention, as well as supplier diversity utilization. Rodney and his wife, Dawn, live in Herndon, Virginia. They are proud parents of two daughters, Elena, a recent graduate of George Mason University, who is presently interning at the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, and Alexandra, a sophomore pre-dental student at the University of Georgia. Go balls. Please join me in welcoming Rodney Ruffin, Hanley, class of 1978. Good evening, everybody. First of all, let's, let's give it up for, uh, and have a moment of silence for Travis, because he's got to make it out that door. Uh, listen, I grew up uh, four, four houses down the street from Tommy Dixon, and he didn't play. He didn't play then. I never had him as a teacher or as a coach, but I understand that he didn't play when he was a teacher and a coach. And judging by the look on his face, he's not playing now. So. <laughs> We might want to say a, a, a word of prayer for those of you who are for Travis. I also want to note that, unlike you, I can't button my jacket anymore, and I just bought this a few weeks ago. But I'm going to go with this. Um, my wife Dawn is here with me, and she winds up having to come to me to a lot of uh, speaking engagements, and she gives me three rules to follow. The first one is keep it short. The second is don't quote Shakespeare. I was an English major, and I love Shakespeare. And, and the third, which really hurts, is you're not as funny as you think you are. <clears throat> so with that, I'd like to let you know that I've pared my remarks down to one hour and 27 minutes. I'd like to start with friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ear. And I'll try very hard not to be funny. Um, I would like to Reflections, reflections. Reflections are hard when you get to be my age and my size because I don't really like looking in mirrors. The guy that I look, you know, in my head is Denzel Washington. <laughs> but the guy I see looking back at me doesn't look much like Denzel. I mean, seriously, I've walked down the street and, and caught my reflection in like a storefront mirror and I was like, who's this fat guy following me? <laughs> Turns out it was me. I'd like to start with a thank you. A thank you for this evening. Um, it is amazing to have these people here in this room. Essence and excellence. I look out in this room in this, and I see nothing but excellence. I'm gonna talk to you a bit about my time in the Winchester Public Schools and, Han and Handley. Um, I was class of 78 which means that I start, class of 78, I know Kim's there, I know, Doug, yeah, there we go. Uh, that means we started in 1966. And if my math is correct, we were the first full class to go through integration. Now, Brown was 1954, declared that separate but equal is inherently unequal. Brown two, the implementation decision was 55, and it declared that schools be integrated and you know the phrase, with all deliberate speed. Well, it turns out all deliberate speed was 12 years after the original decision here in Winchester. I'm not talking about Tupelo, Mississippi, or Selma, Alabama, or the deep, deep south. Apologies to those of you from Mississippi and Alabama. Um, I'm talking about 70 miles from the place where they rendered that decision. So Winchester was fraught and kind of on the front lines of that civil rights movement and that massive resistance movement. And from where I sit, we came through it pretty well. That first class of students who went to either Quarles or John Kerr or what was then Virginia Avenue Elementary, now it's Virginia Avenue Charlotte DeHart Elementary, um, sort of didn't know what we were in for. We were just going to school. Although we had come from my first 
and favorite alma mater, the Fremont Street Day Nursery, that formed the foundation for all the education that I've gotten since. We were going to school. So we showed up in 1973 at Handley. I think we were the last class to go to Handley in eighth grade. That's a really bad idea. Eighth graders got no business being around seniors in high school. It's just a bad mix. But Daniel Morgan hadn't gotten finished, and so we started there in, in eighth grade. And that was OK with me, because I got to see a lot of the big kids that I'd looked up to when I was a little kid, like Andy and like others in this room. The education that I got at, Hampton, at Handley was better than the education that I got at Hampton Sydney and at UVA Law because all of the teachers cared. And all of the teachers, and I'm not going to name any individual ones except one, Mr. Haston, I don't know what they paid you for trying to teach me math, but anybody, I know it wasn't enough to try and get me through Algebra 2 and Trig. I, you have my sympathy, sir. But what I learned set the foundation for all the education afterwards. Critical thinking, how to make an argument and defend an argument and take an argument. Socially, it wasn't always easy. There were times that it was a bit difficult. You may remember the race riot and the walkout in, what, 75? And it started one morning where all the African-American students gathered in the auditorium. We weren't going to class. And then when they came and told us, OK, you got to get out of this auditorium, rather than go to class, the students walked out, stood out on front, on, across Hanley Boulevard. I walked out that first day, but there was a walkout the second day, and I wasn't in it. And um, I was a little bit of a shame, but I'm just here to tell you that I was way more scared of my grandmother than I was of anybody <laughs> in that room. I'm not kidding, man. You know those, those black skillets with the number eight on it? <laughs> It was very clear where that skillet was going to wind up if my butt wasn't in class the next day. So that's why I wasn't there. But for all of that, for all of what some would call difficulties, I would say that my time at Hanley was not difficult at all. Why? Because of the people who came before me, people who were at Douglas and who came to Hanley, the people who were there with me, the people in the neighborhood who thought, I had a half a brain in my head and made me stay on the straight and narrow and made me study and told me that I could be more than I ever thought I could be. The way I say it is, all of you wanted it for me before I could even want it for myself. And I'm very grateful for that. I know that the boss is going to tell me if I'm corny, so I hope that this isn't too corny. But I do want to end the way I started with a thank you. A thank you to those who came before me, who gave, who carried the torch and held it up and passed it on to me and told me that I better not drop it. And to those who were there with me, who held up that torch right there along with me, and to those who came after me, who certainly held that torch higher and carried it farther than I ever did or could ever have imagined. And as again, as I look out in this, in this sea of beautiful faces tonight, it's clear that the torch is burning brightly. Thank you very much. All right, we have a few more of those Hanley Black First uh, questions to test you on. So I hope you're ready. This is ungraded. <laughs> Don't anybody have a panic attack. All right. Who was Hanley's first black to hold first chair in the band? Wait, someone said it. No. No? Not Davenport?
You really thought he was in bad company. Who was Hanley's first black homecoming princess? What? what? Carletta Carey, there it is. Who said that? Also known as Banny, I guess. We got more than Banny. Y'all might know who's Banny. Banny here. I see somebody shaking their head. No, she's not. Okay. All right. Who was Hanley's first black female administrator? Yes, mother. Say it. Tony Carey. Who? Tony Carey was the first black female administrator. Who was Haley's first black principal? Principal. Principal. It's recent. It's recent. Y'all got to, y'all got to dig into your phone. She said it. Dingle, Jesse Dingle. There we go. Oh, you I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Who was Hanley's first black coach? Coach Brown. No. Coach Brown. He is here. Coach Brown. Yes, I heard it. From my mother. Mr. Haston. There it is. Who did it right Come on, Mr. Haston. Go ahead and stand up and do your work. Get your flowers, sir. Get your flowers. Who was Hanley's first black assistant coach? He is also here. Paul Brown. Go ahead, Mr. Brown. Stand up and use your flower, sir. <laughs> and. <laughs> as, a, as a son of an educator. I realize the importance that educators have. Right. And I've, I've given this man a little bit of flat tonight. But I wouldn't be emceeing this event if it wasn't for the confidence this man bestowed upon me as a, as a, as a high school student. Right. For four years walking through Hanley High School, this man said, you have an amazing voice. You should work in regular, you should do this. In post high school, I pursued that. I'm no longer working in that, but I did work in it for a while. And I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna say this, and I'm also, who's Hanley's first black age coach? That man is Thomas Dixon. And if, if it wasn't for that man, and so it was and inspiring, and giving me the confidence to be on stage and be in front of people, I wouldn't be here today. So thank you, Mr. Dixon. Thank you to all the educators. Please, sir, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you. That's you, next. <laughs> All right. And our last um, guess who is who was Hanley's first black head female track and field coach to win a state championship? Ooh. Yes. Yep. We heard it from the back. Debbie Beamer Harris. Do you hear that? There, stand up, Tom. Get up. Come on. Give your mom her flowers when you see Now I'm pleased to introduce our final speaker, Kendra Brown, class of 1998. Her father, Paul Brown, was the first black assistant varsity coach, and both of Kendra's proud parents are here with us tonight. After her years as an exceptional student at Hanley, Kendra completed her undergraduate studies at Hampton University, her Master of Divinity at Harvard University Divinity School, Howard, sorry, <laughs> Howard, you know, Howard University Divinity School and her law degree from Vermont Law School. She then attended the George Washington University School of Law to earn her Master of Laws degree. A lot of masters, a lot of degrees. 
Kendra currently holds the role of Vice President of Public Policy Federal Affairs for MasterCard Corporation. She is also the chair of the Maryland State Advisory Committee of the U.S. Civil Rights Commission. Previously, she was the Chief of Staff for Representative G.K. Butterfield of North Carolina in the U.S. Congress and also served as Senior Director for Diversity, Inclusion, and Affinity for the Washington College of Law at American University, where she led the law school's diversity and inclusion initiatives. Kendra is committed to community engagement and empowerment. She serves in many capacities, but I'm going to pick out one to tell you about. She is a leader of Street Law Incorporated, which is a global nonpartisan nonprofit organization that develops classroom and community programs to educate youth about law and government and teaches them how they can work to affect change in their communities. Kendra is a proud mother of her daughter, Brooklyn. Is Brooklyn here tonight? No. Oh, she's not here, but she's still a proud parent. So please join me in welcoming Kendra Brown, Hanlon Class of 1990. Good evening, everyone. It is such an honor to stand before you this evening, and I cannot go any further without first saying thank you to my parents, Mr. Paul Brown, who was the second assistant principal of John Hanley High School, who was an African-American, so I applaud you. My mother, Dale Brown, who gave my father a chance over 50 years ago. They are celebrating 50 years this year of being there. <laughs> and my brother, who is, I'm a 98 grad, he's a 97 grad, Pastor Justin Brown is here. Thank you to my brother for being awesome. So I'm actually, I typically don't change what I'm going to say midstream, but because of what the three amazing individuals who spoke before me said, I'm going to go slightly a different way because the legacy that we stand upon my colleagues who are here in class of 98, Alicia, Joey, Robert Brown was here, and we also have Shayla. So those are all my 98 fellow students here. The, the legacy that we stand on is because of those who are sitting behind me, because of those who are in front of us. So we want to say thank you. For me to now be in a field of law, and as they were speaking, it is the first time that I realized why so many things in my life that didn't make sense at the time make sense now. Being the state chair of the Maryland State Committee of the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, I get it now, yeah. right? Being the Senior Director for Diversity, Inclusion, and Affinity at the American University of Washington College of Law, when I was there, I didn't understand why that was the role that I took. I get it now, right? Being the Policy Director for the Congressional Black Caucus, where his daughter is an intern, yeah. I get it now. And so I say that to say, I was asked to speak about the pros and cons of being at Hanley, what I learned from being at Hanley, and I know that one thing I will end on, I will end in tribute to Mr. Dixon. I'm going to get there in just a second because I need to weave the path on how the pros and cons lead to where I'm standing now with the legacy of those behind me literally being the wind at my back and our back. So the pros of being at Hanley and being a graduate. I actually grew up running the halls of Hanley High School. I did, because when I was born, I was born in 80, and you started teaching at Hanley in what year? 76, and so when I was four or five, right, my dad was a driver's education teacher. 
and he was also the lead of Minority Concerns. So how many remember Minority Concerns? Yes, yes. Minority Concerns was an avenue for us to be together. And for us to, it, it was a class period where we could come and speak with each other. My dad was one of the leads, Mr. Dixon was one of the leads also. And that was the best class period that I and many of my colleagues ever had because it was our safe space. It was our safe space. And I talk about running the halls of Hanley High School because, again, my father was there, he was a coach. That was the 1984 85 championship football team, right? And then 10 years later, in 94 95, that was again the championship football team. And so, being a part of this school system that many who are in this room fought for us to even be in, it speaks volumes to me. The pros of John Healy High School for me were my teachers. I have teachers who were here in this room. Mrs. McKay was here. I saw her. Mr. Haston was my math teacher. If he can teach me, he can teach anyone. It's a teaching machine. I see Mrs. Shelley Lee here, right? I thought I saw her. Yes. Hi, Mrs. Lee. She's just as energetic as, as she always is. There are many people whose shoulders we stand upon. Mr. Dixon, of course, was my coach. And again, I'm going to come back to Mr. Dixon in just a second. So what were the cons of John Haley High School? The cons were that I grew up running the hallways of John Haley High School. Having my father there meant that not only was he looking after me, everyone else was too. My brother got in a little bit more trouble than I did. And so, um, you know, it, it, it was a blessing to have many individuals, again, whose shoulders we stand upon, be the reason that we were in the school that we would call John Hanley High School, from which Hanley Pride comes, right? So what are the lessons, this was the question for me, what are the lessons that I learned at Hanley that helped me in life? What I learned was the value of hard work, the value of serving community, the importance of friends and comrades, and also how to walk tall. I was the freshman class president, and I was the senior class president. I didn't realize I would be bookends, but that's just how it happened. The next question and final is, what is the importance of this night? The importance of this night is that it reminds us all of the ties that bind us, and the excellence that is our foundation, and the combined strength that we share through our collective experiences. I heard him say that the torch is burning bright. And we just look out among all of you beautiful individuals who are here tonight, our colleagues from John Haley High School, and we know that the torch is burning bright. So again, what are some of the things that I learned from my time at John Haley High School? It takes me back to track and field. So I did a number of, yes, Lish, I'm going to track and field. Did a number of sports, volleyball, basketball, but track and field is where we, we had a championship girls team that Alicia and I were a part of. She was shot put and I was discus. And who was our coach? Tommy Dixon. In the spring, we would start shot put and discus. And we would start, we'd have to go all the way down past the football field. And rain or shine now, rain or shine, if it was muddy, whatever it was, we had to lift that shot put, that muddy shot put. <laughs> because you had to put it here, right? It was muddy, it was nasty. But we had to push it over the goalpost. And the goalpost was down past the football field. And I would have to do the discus, it would be wet, but we had to practice in the game time conditions, right? And so I say this to say, Mr. Dixon would push us so hard because he knew what was in us. And even though it was messy, it was sloppy. Lish went on to be the state champion. And Shaka, listen. Lish, I played second. I was not champion. I wasn't on top, but I was there. I, we both excelled because he pushed us. 
And I say that to say, again, leaning on the legacy of those who are sitting behind me, who preceded all of us, sometimes in life, the things that we have to do are going to be messy, they're going to be sloppy, but it's going to be what is required for the result that you want to have. And so I say to all of my John Haley High School graduates, keep pushing, keep striving, because the legacy that we stand on, that was hard fought for us to stand on, precedes us. And the time calls for us to meet every moment that we stand upon. So I say to you, it is an honor, a sincere honor, to be a John Haley High School graduate. And I stand with all of our black alumni saying, the time always calls for us to rise to the occasion. I thank you, I appreciate you, and I applaud each and every one of you. Thank you, Mr. Dixon, for pushing us. Thank you. Thank you, Kendra. At this time, we want to present our four speakers with a small token of our appreciation for their inspiring words here tonight. Uh, Kara and I, or oh, never mind, Kara's going to, <laughs> Kara's going to give them some uh, small gifts. But I, as she's doing that, can we please all give them another round of applause? here. Um, because we're here for Hanley and Hanley 100, I'd just like to take, because Kendra pointed this out, we've got Mr. Dixon, but we've also got his state champion shot putter, and they are both working in education. I'd like to take the time out for all the past current educators that are in the Hanley school system. Just, if you could please stand up and be recognized. Like, you're a teacher, and you worked in the school system in the past, and you're working in the school system now. We're all in inspiration, so please stand up and please be recognized for all those people. If you teach in a different county that's not uh, handling and not in county, please stand up and recognize them. Thank you to all of you all today. Right here. All right, so now it's time to draw door prizes. So, so get your tickets. Get your tickets you take it in, yeah, and we have four door prizes. Yeah. Oh. One, two, three. And we will have our lovely guest speakers draw the tickets, so you can't blame us. Oh my gosh, blame us for the lovely. table drawings for dinner. Okay, Andy, you're drawing. All right. Andy, you're drawing. They left. No, Andy, stay, stay. Stay, yeah. We're going to get all of you drawn. You know, I'm trying to follow the right. Okay. <laughs> So the first item of the night is for a fun night at the movies. Compliments of the Alamo Draft House Cinema. So hopefully you like the Alamo. All right. Where is he? Okay. Okay. Our first number is zero, four, zero, three, one, one. Zero four zero three one one. Who's that? Anyone? 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 Oh. oh. Got a hand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. I couldn't. I couldn't hear it, but that's all right. He's the winner. <laughs> Burr. Mr. Burr is the winner of that first gift. The second door prize is a gift collection from the Hanley 100 celebration. That winning number is 040406. 040406. Hey, there we go, there we go. Maddie. Congratulations, Maddie. The next door prize is a gift certificate to Bonnie Blues.
The ticket number is 040232. Tanya? Chef Bushrock. All right, there we go. Do we have two winners? Zero, four, zero, two, three, two. Okay, all right. Chef. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and finally we have a gift basket from Scarpa Alta. And that winning number is 040240. There we go, Beth. Allegedly. That's Kim Ball Cousin. She said she's going to break this, but I don't know. Now we'd like for uh, Kim Ball, Candace, Tom, and Floyd to come up to the stage at this time, please. Next, I'd like to introduce Kimberly Ball, who is the vice chair and events chair of the Haley 100 celebration and who served on the committee for this event. Reflections here tonight. 
that will have to get written up and included. So, um, but let's bring it back to the present for now. You know, we have had many events in this celebration going back uh, actually over the past year, and they will continue until June. But I have to say that this event tonight has brought more enthusiasm than most any other, any other event. So give yourselves a round of applause. And it's also one of our very biggest turnouts, so uh, thank you all for that. So I've been really privileged to work on the committee planning this event with the people that Tom Dixon is going to mention in a minute. Um, one of those folks also represents our corporate sponsor for tonight's event. Uh, I can't overstate how important it is for us to have corporate sponsors for these events. Uh, really makes them possible. Um, and Candace Davenport is an officer with First Bank, and she served on our committee, and I'll call her up.
would also like to give a shout out to um, our host here tonight, Backseat Event Center. Uh, we, we were a big crowd for them and they did a good job for us and we really appreciate uh, their staff and their management uh, hosting us. And finally, I would like to um, say that I, you know, I just don't think that this event would be what it has been tonight without the work of this man here. That's you. Uh, you know, there are lots of ways to uh, to engender enthusiasm. And, um, and we, we did all of those ways, but there's nothing like good old-fashioned face-to-face communication. And that's what this guy did, going around this community, talking it up, talking it up, asking for money. <laughs> and uh, he really has made it a success. I have a little gift for you, and then I'll give the microphone to you. Enough. All right, folks. Uh, this has been beyond what I thought it would be, and I do appreciate each and every one of you for coming here tonight. Um, this is something that I know there's a lot of people on this wall that had been waiting to see. They didn't get there, but I think the presence that you have, they're smiling in heaven right now, and, and that's all I can say. I would like to take this time right now to introduce you to the committee that has helped us. Uh, if you can, please stand in place until everybody has been called out. Please hold your applause until we finish, and then we can get this done. First is Carmen Crawford. <laughs> Carmen is from the class of 1972. Robert Nelson. Robert is from the class of 1967. Sheila. Gaither Elliott, over here in the corner. She is from the class of 1972. Cheyenne Jones. Cheyenne was from the class of 2014. Johnny Gilkerson. Johnny is from the class of 2004. Kim Ball. Kim Ball is from the class of 1978. Tanya. Marshall. Tanya is from the class of 1842, I think. Okay. What year was it? What? 89, 1989. I knew it was, I was close. Okay. <laughs> All right, Jeremiah Wilson, who wasn't able to be here tonight, but Jeremiah was from the class of 2010. And then myself, Tom Dixon, who graduated in 1971. Everybody. Now you didn't do that on purpose. What's that? Oh, we forgot somebody. I am so sorry. You didn't have me have put her name down here. That's why. Come here. Come here. This young lady right here. Now, would y'all do me a? Everybody, please do, do, do me a favor. In 1982, the Hanley yearbook did not have this wonderful young lady's picture in the yearbook as a senior. So please, as a group, please get on your feet and give her a round of applause, okay? All right. And that's a true story. That is true. We looked for her yearbook and her yearbook. She was not there, but she was all over the yearbook. So I'll, I asked her, did you graduate? And she said, yes, yeah. she sent it to me on, on a text message. And I said, are you sure? And she said, yeah. So it's been fun. But I've enjoyed working with the committee simply because of all the things that they did to make this happen for you. So if you get a chance, please thank them. 
Next thing, I think we have gifts for Kara and Travis. Travis, yours is going to blow up. <laughs> okay. Okay. Kara, Kara moved down some. Okay. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. And don't you say anything else, because I know where you live, okay? Okay, we want to speak. Thank you, committee. Um, let's see. Now, I would like to take time to thank the supporters. Without the people who gave, who I came and asked for donations and that and the other, thank you from the bottom of my heart. We, we actually overdid it, but you never do in case we'll get to that here in a second. Okay? If you look at your program, there's a list of supporters, and there's still money coming in who have supported the thing, which makes me feel real good. So you can look at the back of it and see exactly who it is. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, the excess money that we make will be given, will be combined so that we can give some scholarships to some students at Hanley High School. Okay? It is still not too late if you would like to donate. So let me know. I will give you a form. You can use this as a tax deduction. Don't give it to the government without helping us out first, okay? And we'll go from there. And the last thing I want to say is, please, thank you for all for coming. This afternoon, I got here about 4.30. And even at that point, I was a little, I don't know what you would call it, but I wasn't sure who was going to come. But it over, you all did me proud, made me proud, simply because, you know, one thing I want to do is, before you leave tonight, I ask you all, meet someone. Meet someone that can, you can go back in time, talk to them. Uh, Hanley is a special place, okay? I think I've, I figured out I was there for 40 years at, uh, in the Winchester City School for 40 years as a teacher, uh, 13 years as a student. <laughs> Not really. Well, I was at Hanley for actually five years from the eighth grade all the way to the 12th. And it was fun. Uh, a lot of the things these gentlemen and ladies said, I, I, I went through. But it was fun. I had a chance to work with Mr. Rumps, uh, Jimmy Wilkins sitting over here, Dennis Haston, Coach Brown, Assistant Principal Brown, and all these people. They made me who I am, and I appreciate that. So thank you for all of what you have done for us. Um, my heart goes out to you. Thank you. Thank you.